let's talk about bronchiolitis now see there so what is the meaning of bronchiolitis first now, bronchiolitis is the inflammation of the bronchioles and bronchioles are this very small airway because they are branches of the bronchi okay so bronchiolitis is an acute infectious inflammatory disease of the lower respiratory tract that results in obstruction of small airway in very simple you know literal meaning you can say inflammation of the bronchioles is called bronchiolitis it is usually caused by infection that infection is leading to inflammation and that inflammation is obstructing the airway okay so this is about bronchiolitis bronchiolitis is the most common clinical diagnosis in infant hospitalized with respiratory syncytial virus infection rsv is respiratory syncytial virus so this is the most common cause of bronchiolitis in clinical practice the syndrome is often indistinguishable from respiratory syncytial virus pneumonia in infant and indeed the two frequently coexist now see that this uh, virus can also cause pneumonia and pneumonia is consolidation of the lung okay inflammation of the lung parenchyma is called pneumonia and usually it is consolidated bronchiolitis is inflammation of the bronchioles which leads to obstruction of small airway so there is a difference between these two condition but these often coexist together because most often they are caused by the same organism that is respiratory respiratory syncytial virus now see there what what about the incidence okay how common it is although it may occur in all age group severe respiratory symptom are limited to young infant because those young infant have got very small airway the diameter of their airway is quite small and if there is a slight amount of mucosal edema okay that can easily cause obstruction see this this mucosal edema can easily lead to obstruction in young infant whereas in the older children and adult they have got larger airway so a slight amount of mucosal edema can be accommodated easily so they don't usually get obstructed that's why uh, if a young infant okay like less than 6 month or up to 1 year if they are affected they are usually having severe disease male to female ratio is 1.5 to 1 and this is one of the commonest infection in the child let's move on now what are the causative agent apart from respiratory syncytial virus see there now the most important cause is respiratory syncytial virus there is no doubt about it it is a principal organism and this is in this is rna virus it belongs to the family paramyxoviridae okay paramyxoviridae family uh, belongs to rna virus other organisms are also there and see there they are influenza virus para influenza virus adenovirus rhinovirus and rarely one of the bacteria which is mycoplasma pneumoniae so most of them are viruses these are respiratory viruses so let me take the name again respiratory syncytial virus influenza virus para influenza adeno rhino even corona virus okay even corona virus corona virus has different species the, the sars cov2 which is uh, causing covid 19 these days you know is a bit different type but so many other coronaviruses are there they can also lead to a bronchiolitis now what is the pathophysiology how these viruses or the bacteria can cause the problem 
Uh, please pay attention. If you understand this, the whole topic would be very easy. Now, they lead to infection first in the respiratory epithelium. And then they lead to death of the cell. Necrosis of the respiratory epithelium, uh, which is one of the earliest lesions in bronchiolitis. Infection and necrosis of the cell. At the same time, there is proliferation of the goblet cell. Goblet cell secret mucus. So because of the proliferation, there is excessive mucus production. Is this good in, a, in the airway of the small baby? Is this a good thing? Yes, no, no, sir. sir. No, sir. Exactly. exactly. The mucus itself can lead to obstruction. The mucus itself can lead to obstruction here. So it is not a good thing. Yes, up to a certain level, the mucus should be there. But this is excessive mucus production. It is not good. The third one, these epithelial cells have the special property of regeneration. They can regenerate. Okay, So they'll regenerate here also. But in the beginning, the cells which are regenerated, they don't have any cilia in them. They are non-ciliated cell. So there is a special function of the cilia. It, it, okay, it removes that secretion outwards. And it also removes any of the foreign body or foreign particle which tries to enter into the airway. It, it, it will also you know, remove that outwards. That is the job of cilia. But these cells in the beginning, they don't have any cilia. So this is also a negative point here regarding pathogenesis. So there is an impairment of elimination of secretion. And this is a viral infection. So there is lymphocytic infiltration. Remember, these are inflammatory cells. Wherever they, they are present, they can cause inflammation there and can result in edema. So there is submucosal edema. Now let's evaluate once again. These are the changes which are going on there. This edema is leading to airway obstruction. This non-ciliated cell cannot you know, eliminate the secretion. Secretion will be retained there. That also leads to airway obstruction. Okay, Excessive mucus production is already leading to airway obstruction. And this necrosis of the epithelium, these necrotic cells will fall there and they will form necrotic debris. It, it, it acts like a small mass there that can also lead to airway obstruction. Sometimes it can go distally also. So all these are the mechanism which leads to airway obstruction in this case. Let's move on. Now see that. Now still the important points are coming here. The pathology results in obstruction of the bronchioles by inflammation, edema, and cellular debris, which is collected there after necrosis of the cell. Now, what are they going to lead? Now, they are going to cause hyperinflation. Hyperinflation means lungs are filled with a lot of air. Lungs are inflated with air. That is the meaning, hyperinflated lung. Increased airway resistance is because of airway narrowing. Okay, the lumen of the airway become narrowed, leading to increased airway resistance. Third is atelectasis or collapse. Now, whenever the airway are completely blocked, remember the part of the lung which are aerated by those airway will be collapsed. This is the mechanism you already know. Collapse means volume loss because there is no fresh air going there. The air which is already there in the lung will get absorbed and that area will lose its volume. It is contracted. Okay, This is known as atelectasis. And the last one is ventilation perfusion mismatch. Perfusion is not having any problem there. Perfusion means blood flow. Okay, blood flow is nice. But what is the problem here? Ventilation. The part of the lung where there is good blood flow but there is no good air flow. So what happens to the blood which is returning back from that part of the lung? It is still deoxygenated. 
isn't it it is still deoxygenated now what will happen to the overall uh, you know picture the baby will be hypoxic yes the baby will be hypoxic there is hypoxemia there is decrease oxygen in the blood so that is happening in case of bronchiolitis because of this pathophysiological mechanism so there is hyperinflation there is increased airway resistance which we can detect by examination wheezing are heard because of increased airway resistance atelectasis and ventilation perfusion mismatch let's move on infant have small airway thus they are affected most often than the bigger child uh, and adult also these respiratory viruses are so common you know any any one of us can be infected uh, from them but we don't show that severe symptom and sign because our airways are bigger recovery begins with regeneration of bronchiolar epithelium after 3 to 4 day but cilia do not appear for up to 2 weeks we already talked about this in the beginning there are no cilia it may take up to 2 weeks for the appearance of the cilia then during till that time the disease will also be all right probably the baby will be fine by 2 weeks okay uh, sometimes the baby may get better by himself or herself if the disease is milder one and if the disease is severe the baby is admitted to the hospital and we take care of that baby and baby will be all right so this is about a pathophysiology of bronchiolitis so as talking about the risk factors of bronchiolitis now bronchiolitis is the uh, you know inflammation of very small airway which are called bronchioles so there has to be some risk factor because all of the baby are not developing it you know only the few of them are developing so those risk factor would be low birth weight baby especially the premature or preterm baby uh, uh, babies from lower socio economic group there are different factors responsible for that okay like overcrowding uh, you know areas isn't it low living standards and all those then other crowded living conditions like day care center for example both parents are working okay these days most of the parents are like that so nobody is there to take care of the baby at home so in the day time the babies are left in the day care center and there may be so many other babies just like him or her so and the respiratory infections are quite easily transmitted from one baby to the other okay this may be the situation another uh, maybe uh, very important one is a parental smoking okay never forget this at home if there is a, a presence of a smoker okay especially like a parents or even grandparents sometime then that is small baby who is there is receiving the harmful effect of that smoking this is known as passive smoking okay. so this is equally damaging for the airway of that small baby so we should uh, remember these important points sometimes what happens the doctor themselves smoke in front of the patient okay we have seen that the doctor themselves smoke in front of those baby when they examine that is absolutely wrong thing they are not giving any good example there the smoking or the smoke can badly damage the function of cilia ciliary functions are you know abnormal in case of smoking chronic lung disease any chronic lung disease the baby is having like bronchial asthma is it is an example of chronic lung disease bronchiectasis lung abscess okay so all these are important example if the baby is already having them then also there is a high chance of having uh, some other inflammation or infection like bronchiolitis severe congenital or acquired neurological disease okay the baby has more chance congenital heart disease with pulmonary hypertension and congenital or acquired immunodeficiency disorder we already talked about that both bronchiolitis and pneumonia are more common in this situation so these are some of the risk factor now 
the most important part of this lecture uh, are clinical features. So please pay attention. Uh, if you understand this, you know, you'll never forget if this question comes again in your exam, you can easily handle it. The incubation period is about four days on average, okay, on average about four days. And these are the common symptom. There may be rhinorrhea because this is a type of viral infection. So rhinorrhea is quite common. Rhinorrhea is a discharge from the nose. And this discharge is watery type of discharge. Sneezing is quite common. Cough is quite common. There is low grade fever followed by all of these features. Low grade fever may remain there for three to four days. Then the baby start to have noisy breathing. Okay, this noisy breathing is mostly wheeze, wheeze. Wheeze are musical type of sound which uh, come through the obstruction of a small airway. These are called wheezes or wheezing you can say, okay. These are musical type of sound which are produced because of obstruction of very small airway and wheezes are mainly expiratory, expiratory. There is rapid breathing. There's no doubt about it. Rapid breathing is there. This is called tachypnea. Any problem in the lung, any causes uh, of hypoxia can lead to rapid breathing. Feeding difficulty. Remember the age group of these babies are very small. They're less than six months or up to one year maximum. So they are having feeding difficulty when there is noisy breathing and rapid breathing. Lethargy is a feature of hypoxemia. And blue extremity is a feature of cyanosis or severe type of hypoxemia. So these are some of the symptoms in those baby who are having bronchiolitis. Now, let's examine that baby, okay? And the examination of the chest or examination of the respiratory system is done under four headings, inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. So let's start with inspection first. Nasal flaring would be there. This is a feature of respiratory distress in that baby. Nasal flaring, very common feature. Accessory muscles are in use, like sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, okay, anterior abdominal wall muscle, muscles of the chest wall, those are also known as intercostal muscle. All of them are accessory muscles of the respiration. They are in use here. Tachypnea, we should, we should count the respiratory rate. If you have not done before, you should count it once again. And when you do that, it's clear cut case of tachypnea. Now, let me remind you once again, regarding the diagnosis of tachypnea, we have got certain uh, you know, count according to the age group. Up to the age of two months, the upper limit of respiratory rate is 60. More than 60 is called tachypnea, okay? From two months to 12 months or one year, the upper limit is 50. More than 50 is called tachypnea. And from one year to five year, the upper limit is 40. So more than 40 is called tachypnea. Never forget this in pediatric absolutely important question by any pediatrician. Another one, you can see is a nasal discharge. This, this nasal discharge uh, may be there or may not be there because it is a use, uh, usual feature in, you know, in those kids who are, you know, having prodromal symptom. Prodromal symptom means those symptoms which come earlier than the real disease, okay? So by the time, all those breathing difficulty, okay, accessory muscles of respirations in use are there. Nasal discharge may not be there also. That's why it is written, may be there or may not be there. Supra or substernal recession. Again, one of the example of accessory muscles of respiration in use actually. Subcostal retraction, intercostal retraction, intermittent cyanosis, wheezing, and grunting, okay, wheezing and grunting. Now wheezing, every student know already. So grunting, I've also explained this, if you remember in my last class, grunting 
is a type of grunt sound which is heard when the baby is having respiratory distress. Most common cause is hyaline membrane disease, but it is also heard in severe pneumonia and severe bronchiolitis. Now, what is the pathogenesis for this grunting? Remember, in this situation also, there is okay, a relative deficiency of a, a surfactant or there is atelectasis of the you know, alveoli going on. Atelectasis of the alveoli. In bronchiolitis, the main problem is atelectasis of the alveoli. So to keep those alveoli open, okay, this is, there is a compensatory mechanism which is going on. And that mechanism is partial closure of the vocal cord so that there is increased pressure generation or development inside the lung. That excessive pressure will keep those alveoli open. So this is what the baby is trying to do. Now, through those partially closed glottis or vocal cord, if air passes, then a sound called grunting is heard. So this is the basic mechanism of grunting. Now, the second uh, type of examination is palpation, palpation. So you have to confirm, okay, most of the thing here. There is decreased chest movement with respiration and we can prove it, okay? We can feel it. We can even measure it. There is decreased chest expansion. There is increased anteroposterior diameter of the chest. Now, let me explain this. This is very important, you know, sentence here. Increase AP diameter of the chest. Normally, there is increased transverse diameter of the chest. Transverse diameter is more than the AP diameter. But in this case, what happened to the lung? What is what is going on there in the lung in this case? Yes. There is a hyperinflation. Hyperinflation of the lungs, sir. Very good. Hyperinflated. Very good. The lungs are hyperinflated. That means there is a lot of air inside the lung. So because of that, the anteroposterior diameter of the lung is as okay, equal to the transverse diameter of the chest or sometimes even more than that. So overall appearance of the chest will be barrel shaped chest. This is called barrel shaped chest. Exactly like emphysema in case of adult. Emphysema is a type of COPD and a same type of things happen in COPD, okay? Barrel shaped chest is a feature of emphysema there, but in uh, bronchiolitis, in case of very small baby, similar type of mechanism occurs. Remember, barrel shaped means rounded chest because epidiameter is as equal uh, as the transverse diameter, or sometimes even more. There is increased temperature of the body. There may be fever in the child. And another very important feature is palpable liver. This liver is pushed down by the overinflated lung or hyperinflated lung. Okay, the liver is pushed downwards. And when we palpate the liver from the abdomen side, we feel the liver is bigger. But actually, the liver is pushed down. Liver is not big in size. Now, one of the very important question we should answer here is how to separate whether this is a big in big or enlarged liver or a push down liver. Anybody? How to separate whether this is an enlarged liver or push down liver? Sir, in the enlarged liver, uh, maybe there uh, and and patient maybe uh, there is a pain and and uh, palpable. It's normal, so there is no pain. Okay. That is one good point you have mentioned. Yes, 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 please. Sir, uh, maybe there is high hyper resonance on uh, percussion. Okay, hyper resonance on percussion to the lung. Good. In case of push down liver. Yes, that is another point I, I accept. Any anybody else? Sir, the enlarged liver can also exert sort of pressure on the uh, stomach like that. And sir, it can also have some sign, but the. Uh, um, but the push down cannot put that sort of pressure on the stomach. Okay. Now, all of you 
please listen. This is a very important practical question for you and you should know how to separate them. All palpable liver are not enlarged liver. Remember this because some of the liver may be pushed down from above and they are just palpable. So all palpable liver are not enlarged liver. Now, why the liver is pushed downward? If there is a hyperinflated lung, like this case, bronchiolitis, if there is pneumothorax, if there is pleural effusion, if there's some mass, okay, there, then those, all of those things will push the liver downward. So liver can become palpable. These are the causes. Now, how to separate? You have to, okay, measure the span of the liver. Okay, measure the liver span. Means what is the total size of the liver? You measure it. Now, how to do that? You percuss the upper edge of the liver first. What is the upper edge of the liver? You percuss it right in the mid-clavicular line, okay? Uh, on the right side, you keep on percussing from above. And when you reach the upper border of the liver, then that resonant sound will turn into dull sound because liver is a solid organ and lung is having air. So resonant sound will turn into dull sound. Mark that area, okay? Continue to percuss downwards. And again, the dull sound will convert into resonant sound because you have uh, you are percussing over the abdomen. Our abdomen, okay, is having intestine. Intestine, now lumen is filled with gas. So again, the dull sound is converted into resonant sound. So measure these two points of dullness. That is the liver. So you have measured the liver now, okay? Now compare, is that size of the liver is normal or is it enlarged, okay? That is the way, uh, you know, we can uh, find whether this is a really enlarged liver or it is just a pushed down liver. Okay, I'm sure it is very clear now to all of you. And there are certain uh, symptoms, uh, you know, you have very nicely mentioned. For example, if it is an enlarged liver, usually it is associated with pain because it is swollen. Uh, it is leading to stretching of the glycine capsule, you know. So usually there is pain there. Okay, and uh, so many other symptoms of liver dysfunction may be there in case of enlargement of the liver. Whereas push down liver, there is no problem whatsoever regarding the functions of the liver. Now, the third type of examination which we are uh, going to do is percussion. Okay. Percussion, uh, just percuss over the chest and there is increased resonance due to trapping of the air inside the lung, okay? Increase resonance. I will not call it hyper-resonance because that hyper-resonance term we use for pneumothorax. This is not a case of pneumothorax here. It is almost like emphysema in adult. Liver dullness is pushed to lower than normal because of the uh, over-inflated lung. The last part is auscultation. Now you take your stethoscope out and put that stethoscope on the chest and listen for a different type of sound. The first is breath sound, okay? First is breath sound. So uh, I will listen whether those breath sounds are heard equally on both sides or not. That is the first thing I'll always examine. Second, what type of breath sounds are there? Are there vesicular breath sound? or some other abnormal type of breath sound like bronchial breathing or not? Are there any additional type of sounds present like wheezing or crackles? Or what about the inspiration and expiration? What is the length? So all these things, you know, we examine on auscultation. You see this? In this case, there is prolonged expiration. Now, why there is prolonged expiration? Because the airway are narrow, especially the smaller airway, they are blocked or obstructed or becoming narrow. So prolonged expiration is a feature of bronchiolitis, just like bronchial asthma. There is diminished air entry bilaterally, again, because of airway obstruction. Very, very faint breath sound, again, because of airway obstruction. Fine crackles. Remember, bronchiolitis is often associated with pneumonia. The similar organism may be causing pneumonia there. 
So crackles are also there along with wheeze. But if you compare between the two, wheezes are more predominant than the crackles. And in severe uh, case, uh, you know, where there is severe type of bronchiolitis and if the child is hypoxemic, then the, the child may be collapsed. And in that case, there are absent breath sound because there is no movement of the air inside the airway. This is a, a emergency case and we should, you know, do some emergency resuscitation to revive the child. Otherwise, the child will die. So these are some of the auscultatory findings. Now, the another part of this lecture is, what are the differential diagnosis of a bronchiolitis? What are the other condition which, you know, may look similar? What is bronchial asthma? Bronchial asthma, okay, is an allergic condition. Uh, there are two types of asthma, actually, extrinsic asthma and intrinsic asthma. Intrinsic asthma, we really do not know the pathogenesis, and that is not very common also. Much common is extrinsic one, and extrinsic is associated with allergy. So bronchial asthma is a repeated, okay, uh, episodes of bronchoconstriction will be there. Repeated episodes of bronchoconstriction will be there, and those bronchoconstrictions are reversible type, especially when we give bronchodilator drug. Okay, so there are multiple episodes of bronchial asthma. And in case of bronchial asthma, also the lungs are overinflated. Remember that there are presence of wheezing. Okay, so many of the uh, features they match. Pneumonia. Pneumonia is another very common infection which we are going to talk in today's class. Pneumonia. This is inflammation of the lung parenchyma with consolidation. Okay, there are crackles present, and there is fever also. There is cough. There is difficulty to breathe. There are features of respiratory distress. So pneumonia is a very important differential diagnosis. Whooping cough is because of cough, okay? Because of breathing difficulty. A whooping cough is quite easy to distinguish. Whooping cough is caused by bacteria known as Bordetella pertussis. We all know that. And it lasts very long, you know, without treatment. It is a chronic type of illness. And some of the textbook even mention this as a 100 day cough. Congestive cardiac failure. It's an important differential diagnosis because in heart failure also, there is congestion of the lung, there is pulmonary edema, there is difficulty to breathe, there is cough, so many important points. But in heart failure, more common are the crackles than the wheezing. And there is edema in the baby or the child and there is hepatomegaly. This is really enlarged liver. This is not a pushed down liver, you know, so we can confirm it. And chest X-ray will go give you very important evidence, okay, in congestive heart failure. Foreign body aspiration okay, can occur in that age. And foreign body aspiration uh, usually occurs toward the one side of the lung, just one lung. And there is, you know, collapse in that particular area, okay. The child usually cough vigorously. And when we take the X-ray or CT scan, we can diagnose it. So these are the differential diagnosis of bronchiolitis. Let's move on. What are the investigation we like to do in the case of bronchiolitis? Now we start with uh, blood count, okay? Like total count, total count. So what happens to the total count now? See here, it may be normal or it may be high. 8,000 to 15,000, it may not be exactly like this, okay? This is just one of the example we are, we are providing here. Uh, it may be like 4,000 to 8,000 also, or it may be 8,000 to 10,000 or 12,000 like that. And if we do the differential count, there may be lymphocytosis. ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay will detect antibody and it is 85 to 95, 90% sensitive here. It will detect antibody. And if facilities are available, you can go for viral culture. But for the clinical diagnosis, it is not necessary. But for the research purpose, viral culture can be done.
Now, another important investigation is chest X-ray. Now, this is a very important, you know, uh, slide, uh, and I'm sure I've already explained most of much of the points before. So, uh, just pay attention here. The lung fields are hyperlucent. Now, why are they hyperlucent here? Why? Why hyperlucent? What do you mean by hyperlucent? It looks black in color, more blacker than the normal lung. That is hyperlucent. So, why it looks more blacker than the normal? Sir, because of hyperinflation, sir. Exactly. Exactly. Because of excessive air trapping, because of overinflation or hyperinflation. The same reason. When there is excessive air collection inside the lung, you know, it looks more blacker than the normal. Same like emphysema. Atelectasis. Now, atelectasis, atelectasis are patches okay, of white opacity inside the lung. They are patches of white opacity because that's a collapsed lung. And that collapsed lung is because of complete obstruction of the small airway. Chest infiltrations are seen, especially in the perihilar region. This is a hallmark of viral infection of the lung. Diaphragm are pushed down, again, because of overinflated or hyperinflated lung. And we all know the right dome of the diaphragm is higher than the left. So in this case, okay, the right dome of the diaphragm and the left dome of the diaphragm probably at the same level. And this is how we, we, we identify, yes, diaphragms are pushed downwards. Other abnormalities uh, can be ruled out by chest X-ray. And these are important differential diagnosis. See there, uh, foreign body can be ruled out, congestive cardiac failure can be ruled out, and even pneumonia can be ruled out by chest X-ray. The chest X-ray is absolutely important investigation in case of bronchiolitis. Now, I have collected one chest X-ray here. Have a look at this. These are bilateral perihilar infiltrate present in this chest X-ray. You see this. This is a cardiac shadow. Okay. This is a cardiac shadow. And these are the lung shadows. This is right lung. Here is the left lung. This is called hilum of the lung. Hilum. So if you pay attention here, there are some infiltration we can see around the hilar area. Okay a bit of white patchy type of infiltration. These are very common in viral infection. One of the other tests which we can do is measurement of uh, pulse oximetry because if any child is hypoxic, especially you know the severity of hypoxia or hypoxemia can be detected by uh, uh, taking the pulse oximetry. And these days, this is considered as fifth vital sign because it's of absolute important, you know, uh, evidence it is providing, you know, towards the hypoxemia. So it is always done. And let me, you know, share some other important facts. These days, we are facing a pandemic called COVID-19 all over the world. And COVID-19, okay, causes hypoxemia. We all know that. So this pulse oximetry is one of the tool, you know, which is used to make sure whether these patients can or need admission in the hospital. Uh, or not, if a pulse oximetry shows hypoxemia, they are admitted. Otherwise, you know, we can send them home and give a good counseling. So very, very important one. Similar type of situation here. Reserve electrocardiogram or echocardiogram for rare cases of children who display arrhythmia or cardiomegaly, uh, because that is one of the differential diagnosis. Uh, so if you suspect uh, heart disease are there, then you can go for ECG or ECHO. ECHO will confirm the diagnosis of uh, heart disease or not. Now, the final part is the treatment. Now, before I uh, you know, start the discussion of treatment here, let's share some of the important points with you once again. Many of the time, we are confused with pneumonia and bronchiolitis. Now, let me ask this question right here. 
how to differentiate between pneumonia and bronchiolitis if it is a pure case of pneumonia or pure case of bronchiolitis how to separate them yes sir in pneumonia there is consolidation and uh, opacification in the lungs uh, and but in uh, bronchiolitis there is hyperinflated and uh, the dark lungs okay good that is one point very good any other yes sir because in bronchiolitis the air is trapped in pneumonia the solidification sir in the pneumonia the alveoli are um, uh, sir in pneumonia sir mainly the alveoli are highly affected and the bronchioles are affected in bronchiolitis okay and no. sir sir in, sir in pneumonia there is oxygen uh, less oxygen saturation because there is a mismatch and in bronchiolitis sir, there is a uh, proper uh oxygen in nation but uh, there is an uh, there is a problem in the removal of the air okay but sir now, the pure ratio is more than 0.8 okay now see that so so many important points are coming very good you know you are thinking in a very good direction and this type of practical questions are asked all the time when you go to hospital when you go for internship or when you do residency you know these are the questions which will be asked to you by your teachers or by your senior or consultant now see here if it is a pure case of bronchiolitis versus pure case of pneumonia it is quite easy for us to to differentiate bronchiolitis are mainly caused by viruses whereas pneumonia can be caused by viruses or can be caused by bacteria okay in pneumonia usually the fever is higher grade than bronchiolitis the child looks more sicker than bronchiolitis but sometimes bronchiolitis child can also be sick it depends on the extent of hypoxia there now regarding the uh, you know examination finding of bronchiolitis the liver is pushed downward isn't it the lungs are over inflated we can prove that okay and chest x ray will show perihilar infiltration whereas in pneumonia okay there is patchy type of opacification it depends which type of pneumonia i am talking about if it is lobar pneumonia one whole lobe is consolidated if it is bronco pneumonia there is patchy type of consolidation okay but liver is not pushed down there lungs are not over inflated and mainly they have got crackles okay in the early stage later on there may be bronchial breathing but in bronchiolitis it mainly has wheezes so this is how you know you you differentiate these two and having said that in practical life you know many of the time it is quite challenging for us to differentiate between pneumonia and bronchiolitis so many of the center they treat bronchiolitis as pneumonia and there is no harm because if i don't treat pneumonia and if it is because of bacteria you know uh, the child may get complicated very soon but bronchiolitis child because it is caused by viruses uh, you know even if we do not uh, use antibiotic it may not complicate very quickly so these are some of the practical information now let's come to the slide what are the indication for hospital admission here see this the indications for hospital admission in a case of bronchiolitis are when oxygen saturation monitored by pulse oximetry is below 92% in room air this is definite evidence of hypoxia younger than 6 month babies and who are unable to maintain oral hydration they cannot drink and they are quite young so they need to be admitted and given iv fluid and uh, you know uh, treated in the hospital if the babies are having markedly elevated respiratory rate okay then also they need to be admitted and if there are history of chronic cardiorespiratory disease the chance of complication is high they need to be admitted so these are some of the indication of hospital admission now what type of care we provide in the hospital administer supplemental humidified oxygen supplemental humidified oxygen to maintain the transcutaneous saturation above 92% so this has to be done oxygen is always given in the humidified form otherwise it is irritant for the airway especially if it is dry okay humidification is very important one give enough fluid for the baby 
If the baby cannot drink, give IV fluid. And do not give extra fluid, okay? Otherwise, it may uh, precipitate heart failure. So give enough amount of fluid. The goal of fluid therapy is to replace the deficit and provide the maintenance requirement. Every student know the meaning of deficit and maintenance requirement already. Deficit means whatever fluid is lost from the body, we have to replace that. And maintenance fluid is necessary for day-to-day -day metabolic activity. So both are important here. Avoid excessive fluid administration because this may promote interstitial edema formation. Pulmonary edema or heart failure may be you know, precipitated by excessive fluid. So we avoid that. Now, other types of treatment would be, we perform nasal and oral suctioning in that baby because there is too much secretion coming and that is causing the airway obstruction. Monitor the patient carefully in order to detect apnea. Now, what is apnea? What do you mean by apnea? No breathing. Yes? No, no breathing, sir. No breathing. No breathing. Very good. It's a type of disturbing sleep, sir. Yes. Apnea means, you know, stoppage of breathing. Okay. Cessation of breathing. But not forever. If the child is not breathing, then the, that's a dead child, isn't it? So it is a temporary pause. And usually, according to definition, that pause is more than 20 seconds. Okay. More than 20 seconds. That is apnea. And many of the small baby, they stop to breathe in this type of respiratory obstruction. So we have to detect apnea. Otherwise, we may lose the child unknowingly. And pay attention to the fever also. Talking about the treatment of bronchiolitis. Now see there. Bronchiolitis is caused by viral infection, isn't it? So uh, we uh, do not have uh, many antiviral agents, but we do have rivavirin. This rivavirin acts against respiratory syncytial virus, but so many others viruses like influenza, parainfluenza, adeno, rhino, corona. Okay, we do not have many antiviral drugs. Yes, we do have antiviral drug against influenza virus, but you know it also depends on the situation. We are not going to use those drugs to all the kids. It depends how severe is the kid there on our examination. Sifotaxim, on the other hand, okay, is a controversial type of management because I just now explained to you, if it is a pure case of bronchiolitis, we do not need to use any antibiotic. But sometimes what happens, we cannot uh, distinguish whether it is a uh, pneumonia or bronchiolitis. So during that time, it is better to start, uh, you know, broad spectrum antibiotic like this. Okay, it is safe for the baby. And one other important point, uh, cefotaxime do not cover listeria. So to cover listeria, we need to use ampicillin. We need to use ampicillin. So these are some of the important management, you know, uh, point regarding bronchiolitis. So let me summarize this topic before I move on to the uh, discussion of pneumonia. Bronchiolitis is mainly caused by viruses. Okay, mainly caused by viruses, first thing. Bronchiolitis occurs in very small babies, usually less than six months or up to one year. In those babies, that the size of the uh, small airway or bronchioles are very narrow. So even a slight amount of edema can obstruct the airway. And the important point here is breathing difficulty. Breathing difficulty, especially expiration is a problem. So because of this, there is trapping of the air inside the lung. The lungs are hyperinflated or overinflated. Okay, the diaphragms are pushed down. Liver and spleen both are pushed downwards. During examination, we can confirm all of these. Okay, another important point here is regarding the management. These babies are hypoxemic, so we confirm whether the baby is hypoxemic or not by, by pulse oximetry, okay, pulse oximetry. If the oxygen saturation is well, way below, less than 92% on the room year, then we admit these babies in the hospital with oxygenation and other management depends on the situation. 
if we are strongly you know um, sure that this is a pure case of a viral uh, you know disorder or bronchiolitis we don't use any antibiotic but if we are not sure if you are working in some remote areas where the facilities are not that good in your hospital do not take any chances uh, start ciprofloxacin with ampicillin to cover all other bacterial agent okay treat the child in hospital after a few days the baby will be all right and you can discharge so this is all about bronchiolitis